Good morning, everybody. Hope you're all well. My name is Richard. It is 4.30 in the morning and I am in a very beautiful John O'Groats. And I'm about to take on the John O'Groats, the Land's End Challenge. That is the longest journey you can do in the UK without getting wet. So I'm at the very northern tip of Scotland. I'm going to drive all the way south to the bottom southwest of England in Cornwall, where we've got Land's End. It says here 874 miles away. So if you don't think electric cars can do long journeys, then you need to come along with me on this day because it's going to be a bit of an epic adventure. It's a pretty famous challenge. It's been done before by electric cars. That's nothing new, uh, but it's my first time doing this. And there's a couple of records to maybe be set here as well. I'll give it a good go. So come along and join me. This is it, it's pouring with rain now. I don't know if it picks up on camera, but I think I'm gonna get in the car now. Just get the last bit of the charging done. I'll be on my way. I was hoping it was gonna be good weather. This is British summertime. The rest of the country is enjoying a heat wave at the moment. Uh, but here it is about 10 degrees Celsius, which is pretty freezing. I'm shaking, so I'm gonna get in the car. Right, it's 4.59 a.m. So I will leave at exactly 5 a.m. I can't change the times on this car. It, uh, it's just at the British, the United Kingdom. Uh, here's my phone just to kind of verify 4.59 a.m. It is Thursday the 13th of July. So when this hits 5 a.m. I will set off and get going. Uh, this is the plan. This is what the car is kind of planning out down to Land's End there. Uh, but we need to try and minimise the charging time and the charging stops, of course. This is a 2019 Tesla Model S Long Range. It's, the, it's like the 100D, but it's the one after we call the Raven. It's when they're badged as Long Range or Dual Motor. And it's actually slightly different to the S100D because it's got... There we go, 5 a.m. Let's go. And we're off. So, yeah, this is slightly different to the 100D because it's got slightly more, uh, it's got a different front motor from the Model 3, so it's more efficient. And it uh, also has adaptive damping suspension, so it's very comfortable indeed as well. So, it's ideal for a long journey like this. I'm going to be driving uh, as quick as I can, basically, you know, speed limit stuff. Uh, I want to, I'm not going to kind of just go down the motorway at 30 miles an hour like Ford did with the Mustang Challenge. I want to try and set a, a time as fast as you can do within the legal limits on the roads and uh, see what we can get out of this. So let's make sure we are in. Range mode is on. And also we probably want the suspension down in low most of the time so that we uh, get better aero. You can see here the adaptive damping stuff, look. So this is going to be a long day, but uh, kind of good, good to try it. I've, Never, never thought I, uh, I've never done it before. And so, it's gonna be a good challenge. We've got 11 degrees Celsius according to the car, but I have to say it feels, feels colder. It's just been raining and uh, it's quite windy as well. So this isn't gonna be ideal for getting the best efficiency. I'd like to, if I can, skip this first charging stop in Perth and go straight on to uh, south of Glasgow if I can. Let's see how we get on. I haven't, uh, really planned for this to be honest I was just in Edinburgh yesterday doing something else and thought this would be a good idea <laughs> I may well regret that but uh, let's see if we go I don't know if you can see that flag there look at that that's uh, whipping across sideways so we've got quite a strong crosswind here right now roads here are just great for testing the suspension and handling of the Model S. Look at that view out there. So the weight of the battery under the floor keeps the body level. It's the suspension here, got adaptive damping that's working hard, absorbing all the bumps. And what I can do is generally maintain a pretty good speed even around uh, some fairly tight corners. It doesn't lean too much. It's uh, got a nice turn in. You know, for a big lump, this car isn't bad at all. And I've got a truck in the way. Going up a steep hill. Let's quickly dispatch him. Instant power from the electric motor. I mean, this car's just perfect for these kind of roads. Let's 
7 a.m. and I'm two hours in. A couple of that are now making me slow down. Thank you, mate. Two hours in, not even the Inverness yet. So that's how far that first section is. But the roads are getting flatter, drier, smoother, straighter now. So I've covered 103 miles in that two hours. So that's pretty good going considering those small roads there. Uh, but more consistent flat A roads. It's coming up to 13 degrees Celsius now as well. I'm still going for Abington Supercharger and I'm going to ride there at 3%. Perfect. There was a software update recently and it did specifically say the tests have improved that estimation of percentage of arrival. And it even includes weather data like wind direction um, to calculate how efficient the car is likely to be and what you are likely to arrive at. It does seem to be much steadier, more consistent than it used to be. At last, motorway. So I've just joined the M80. It's taken four hours, 35 minutes to get to motorway. So that's it now. No more stuck behind trucks and single carriageways, hopefully, and no more roundabouts and all that kind of stuff. We can make real good, consistent progress now. So that was 263 miles before we even got to a motorway. And now I'm on the M80. I can get autopilot on. This car's got FSD enhanced autopilot, so that's on. That can take most of the work away now. And I can just sit here and monitor. This is the first charge stop. So that's that's the longest leg. Uh, and that was five hours, 25 minutes. So, you know, I've got a well-trained bladder here, but is there really that many people that can do five and a half hours without taking a wee break? Um, they've got the range of, not they, some of these cars. So, that's 316 miles covered and um, I've averaged 266 watt hours per mile. I'll take a picture of this when uh, we stop, but I won't charge 100% again. That's the longest leg. So now I'll, I'll sort of bunny hop a little bit. I'll see what my next charge stop might be, but I'll probably go up to 50, 60%, something like that. So it gets a good fast charge. And then when the charge speed starts slowing down, that's it, we can move on. So I'll have a bit of a look at the, the map and everything in a minute. The car's suggesting kill, which, yeah, kills just on the motorway, so there's no kind of delays with that, which is good. So I'm going to start a timer when I start uh, charging, but I'm not going to wait until it says charging. I'm going to start a timer from the moment I get out of the car, because some chargers, if you're in another car and you're not using a Tesla one, you've got that bit of faff while you sort out an app or a payment and such like. Most of them are pretty simple now, but it can happen. So what I'm going to do is start the timer from the moment I step out of the car. Uh, so let me just pull in here. I'm gonna, these are only 130 kilowatt V2 chargers, they're not V3s, but the car will only take about 130 anyway because we have to use a CCS adapter over here. But that's okay. There we are, 2%. That was 316 miles, so hopefully this camera can pick up this log. Uh, I do need a toilet now. <laughs> let me take a picture of that. There we go, just so we can see, it is 10.27 now. Then we start a timer, then we, that's fair, I think, isn't it? I don't know how the other guys did it and looked, but ready, steady, go. Okay, let's see how long it takes to actually charge. So there's a communication process between the car, there we go, and it's off, so it took 29 seconds. I have known, you know, for example, a Porsche Ioniq just sometimes takes like a couple of minutes for that kind of what they call a handshake. And there we see the speed ramping up. So I'll leave that timer running in the background. And that was 10.27. So I'm gonna turn the cameras off because I'm gonna go to the toilet and everything like that. Okay, stop the clock, 22 minutes, 39 seconds. I'm back in the car unplugged. So Abington there was a little bit slow and the other people were turning up and needed a share and they're only V2 chargers so whilst I was in the toilet another chap plugged in next to me when there was another gap further up so we, he moved but it, it slowed my charge down a little bit um, and then I was just considering the options let me just clip this on what I'm going to do I could stay there and, and quite quickly charge enough to get to Kiel but Kiel has only got four chargers, and if they get busy, then again, I'm going to be sharing. So what I'm going to do, I've just unplugged, got straight back in, and I'm going to go to T-Bay for a quick top-up, which will then, I can keep the fast charge to go to a bit further south, Hilton Park. So, and Hilton Park's got the 12 chargers, so there's less chance of it being busy and such like. 
So that wasn't quite as slick as I was hoping, that one, but nonetheless, we'll see what we can do and make ground. There we go, 11.30 a.m., so I'm just passing Gretna Green, uh, which is a wink with the Boys and Model 3 challenge. They did their second charge there. Uh, so I'm passing an hour, 28%. It's warming up nicely, 19, 20 degrees now, air conditioning's on. I'll dial that down a little bit there. And um, I am due to arrive at T Bay here about 12%. And then I go to, I think, Hilton Park near Birmingham. So that's the plan so far. And now there's some roadworks. So just finishing the second stint now. That was another 93 and a half miles. Uh, it's taken one hour, 20 minutes. So it's a shame. I've been watching T Bay services go from having six stalls available to five to four and now apparently there's two and again just they're not v3 chargers so there can be some shed power but let's go and have a look it is what it is i mean we're doing this in a you know a thursday afternoon and uh you know if i did this in the middle of the night the chargers are quieter but this is what it is you know it's fine there's chargers available t-bay services by the way gets my vote for being probably one of the best services in the uk proper food and just a nice place it's usually snow in here I have to say. pretty busy services so there's a lot of cars on the road there's obviously a lot of people traveling today it's the i think it's all these kids holidays in scotland so they're off i mean yeah this looks like a bank holiday the amount of people traveling in fact look at that for the first time ever i've turned up at a tesla charger and they're all busy apart from there's the one at the end there crikey Looks like plenty of kids must have finished school already and on holidays. Well, do you know what? It's the first time I've turned up to a Tesla Charger, apart from years ago when there was only two at Winchester. I've not had them all available. Right, so as ever, I'm going to start my timer as I get out. So we're at 2239, ready, steady. There's that there, look. 12% now, go. So I'm sure I'll supercharging. There you go. I'm picking up now. Charge at 12 12. It's died. Okay, we'll let the timer run. Trouble is, we're sharing power. We don't get that much, will we? Yeah, so that's a bit of a shame. That could scuff my chances. The car next to me has moved now, so I'm now pulling the 146 kilowatt, which is good. But um, yeah, that cost me because we, I was only charged at 72 for a while. We were sharing power. Um, but it's lunchtime on a busy, you know, approaching summer holidays now. So. It is what it is, but uh, now we've got some ramped up speed, 12.24. I'm going to unplug and go. I've got 47%. I'm still charging 132 kilowatts, but I'm going to unplug and go. Okay, and stop the clock. 43 minutes so far. This is enough to get me down to Birmingham now. Oh, bit of a shame about that. Uh, look, there's loads of spaces now. I just happened to pull up when it was particularly busy, so it was just a bit unlucky. But that's what it is. It's a popular service, is this one. And now there's a Alphard hybrid blocking my way. I don't know what they're doing. Come on in. Up against the clock here, mate. Come on, let's go. Okay, well, I'll get my way. I've got 48% battery now. I've covered 410 miles. And I've got. Ah, da, 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 da. Move charge stops. Might as well stay plugged in the way this guy's moving around the car park in front of me. It's 6% at Hilton Park southbound. That'll do. Okay, so stop number three. I'm at Hilton Park Services just near Birmingham. Not done too bad, the M6 actually. Anyone knows the M6 knows that it's always a bit chaotic there and lots of sort of 50, 60 speed limits. But um, so what do we do? Look, another two hour, 10 minute leg there, 143.6 miles. You can see I'm not speeding. Look, see, average that out. Um, 554 miles covered in total now. I'm arriving here with 8%. And uh, there are the chargers in front. 23, no problem there. Let's get, it. get the uh, phone out, plug, there, let's get the timer up, hang on. Okay, so we've got, oops, wrong one, that one. Cost myself time here. Three, two, one, go. Oh yeah, there we go. Starting to charge. So I'm counting all this time, but I'm just counting all the time that I'm literally stationary or out of the car. There we go, it's going to ramp up now to 8%. What are we going to get? 
70. So what it seems to do, it did this earlier, below kind of eight, nine, ten percent, it goes to 70 first and then it will ramp up more, I think. Uh, there we go. I mean, I'm not sharing power. Again, they're V2 chargers. There's also going to be V2 chargers on the M6, but let's have a look what we can get. 150 kilowatts, so this should ramp up to 140 something. 24, 75, coming in, let's speed this up. So it's almost not worth arriving with less than 10% really, because it seems to just need to get itself going at that low state of charge. Again, the percentage at arrival uh, estimation was pretty good. There we go, 90, just as we're at 9% now. So again, it you need to arrive at 10% really, that's probably the key with this car. Getting nail bites in now, so 57%, just throttling down now, 112 kilowatt charge speed. Minus four at lifting, so I need to get that. So I've got 10% really, but I've got an hour and five minutes charging in total now. Or actually, a bit less for charging, but I'm counting as soon as I get out of the car. Uh, and if you don't believe me, you think I'm stopping this, where well, you can just check the time in here. It's currently 15.07, so you should be able to see this in most of the camera shots. Yeah, come on, come on, come on. So I've now got it's one hour 35 minutes and 32 seconds, I think, uh, charging time. So this is now eating into that final bit there, basically. But I need to charge this rear. I don't want to do the diversion into Exeter. It'd be slightly, I don't know, it could be quicker. I'm still pulling 110 kilowatts, so that's okay. We'll go with this. I'll go until we've got an hour, if I go until we've got an hour 15, even, then I've got 20 minutes here in the bag. Hmm, getting tight. I'll tell you what, this is hard work. You know, at the end of the day, I've done, it was, when I got here, it was what, 49 minutes, I think, to do 550 miles, <laughs> which is a lot. Uh, Edinburgh to London's 425, 420, so yeah, you know, these, these cars can get around the country, can't they, these EVs? Still, so we've got 60%, minus one. Ooh, we stand a chance, I think. We do stand a chance. Yeah, Hilton Park. 62% just throttling back now, 105 kilowatt charging speed. If I leave now, I'll get to lift them with nothing. So I need to wait a little bit longer. It's 15.09, I've got one hour, maybe one hour, eight minutes stoppage time so far. Okay, arriving with 8%, one hour and 12 minutes in total. I think I'm gonna call it quits. I've throttled down to 88 kilowatts at 70% battery now. So I think I'm just gonna head on now. Still means I've got 20, just under 20 minutes in the bag now. Okay, let's go. Okay, so you should be able to see, stop that, stop the clock. We're now 13.07 so far, it's 15.15. You should be able to see that on one of the cameras. If you're in any doubt, it's 15.15. Okay, another three hour stint now. This is odd. Well, I am putting air conditioning on, that's for sure. It's quite warm now, which is good. 28 degrees, but it's probably a bit of a ambient temperature of the batteries that are charging there, but it is quite nice and warm now. Okay, I'm on the next leg. Well, good evening. It's now quarter past six. So off that last stop, there was quite a lot of traffic, and so I've lost a bit of time there. You can see here, I've been going three hours since then, and I've only covered 180 miles, and it's all been motorway. Uh, so obviously, if it was 70 miles now the whole way, I'd have covered 210 miles. So I have lost a fair bit of ground there, unfortunately. Uh, so it's, it's fairly tight, but I think if there's no more issues, then the odds would be in my favour for beating uh, the record that I kind of want to at least match or, or get close to. I'm not determined to try and beat somebody. They did a great job, but the record that sticks in my mind is the, uh, the three guys in the Model 3. And that's the main comparison for me, really. Model 3 long range, see how this compares. Uh, you know, and they did, they did really well. So um, I think I might just do it, to be honest, if there's no more issues. So they've, they've done a good time there because it's been a hard one to crack. Uh, but we'll uh, we'll give it a shot. Uh, but just I'll take a moment for this car. It's just been epically brilliant. Uh, I've been using enhanced autopilot for a lot of it, much like this. So that takes a lot of the strain off of it. It's been working pretty well, to be honest. So that's been good. Um, 
it's been just very comfortable. I'm still in this seat comfortable. I'm not got an issue. There's loads of lumbar adjustments. I've moved that a couple of times, but I find this car supremely comfortable and you can see the ride quality here is just lovely. Uh, if I bring up the suspension screen, you can see it doing its job here. Yeah, show suspension data, all this little stuff there. Uh, but that's been great. So, yeah, what a day, eh? Uh, that's been uh, 11 and a quarter hours since I left now. So, uh, sorry, 13 and a quarter hours since I left now. Uh, but I'm actually feeling okay, you know, all good. Uh, I kind of feel like I've got a show of Lego hands. <laughs> like this, you know. Um, that's quite good. This car just broke then. I pilot already had it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, good. So, last leg of the journey. Um, and remember throughout this I don't want anyone to quote the Ford uh, Mustang uh, record to me of only charging for 43 minutes between John O'Groats and Land End. Land End it doesn't count they took 27 hours to do this journey because they're crawling along a motorway which is completely unrealistic it's outright it's frankly dangerous isn't it you know uh, so I, I think Ford are kind of trying to grasp one headline they could get um, and I'm not out to dismiss the Ford Mustang, I quite like the Ford Mustang, as I've said before, but it was a bit of a sort of desperate attempt, and I also really hated when they, when they did that, and they made a big press out event out of it, they left John O'Groats with two REC vans in tow, you know, like electric cars can only get on the motorway at 30 miles an hour with two breakdown trucks in tow, uh, so it really did quite annoy me, the, the kind of press coverage of the Ford one, uh, so if, uh, if you can join me in agreeing that a John O'Groats to Land's End should be about driving, you know, abnormal speeds, proper speeds. So you can see here I'm coming up at 210 miles now, which should have taken three hours because it's all been motorway, but because of the traffic jam, uh, it's taken three hours 24. So basically I lost 24 minutes because of that traffic jam, uh, which is a bit frustrating, isn't it? Uh, but never mind, but there's the proof. All right then, this is Lifton, uh, right on the Devon border uh, with Cornwall, just about in Devon. And uh, this is a rather splendid Arundel uh, hotel. Not the Arundel. Big up the Arundel. Thanks for putting charges in your car park. Fantastic of you to do so. Been useful for many a holiday maker down in Cornwall, these have. All right, so they've all got charge. No, there's two here. I've used these ones. Right, that's all good. And let's back this in. Moving quickly without being dangerous, of course. And uh, Renault Zoe's blocking the other charger so someone can't double up against me. Okay, if you're ever in doubt how easy it is to plug in a car, let me take you with me this time. So let's just double check. 1842, need my phone on me. Uh, so that was 254 hours per mile, 3 hours 27, 211 miles. Pretty efficient, isn't it? Four miles per kilowatt hour, basically. Okay, right, let's plug it in and show you how it's done in case you've never seen it before. I just realised I undid my belt in the car, my trousers are falling down. Okay. That's a charger. Open it up. Plug it in. It's that easy. Oh yeah, start the timer. Let's start the timer. So here's the clock. And start. There we go. That's it. So big up to the boys at uh, Zero Carbon World when they set that record. They did it with one hour, 32 minutes, 32 seconds taken for charging. I could leave there now and get there with zero. So I need a little bit more. I'm only pulling 112 kilowatts, so I should be pulling 140 something here, but um, let's just check the speed of these chargers. Yeah, up to 150 kilowatt max, and there's no one next to me, so uh, being held back a bit by that. But what are we at? One hour, 20 minutes. So really that's all it needs. Now I've got 1% if I get there, so I'll call it about an hour and 20 minutes of charging time. That's the timer so far. It's currently 18.50, but let's allow a little bit of buffer. Just to make sure we get there. You never know. A bit of a diversion or something. Sometimes in the evenings they start roadworks and close roads and you divert and all sorts of stuff. So I better allow just a little bit more. Another couple of minutes. Okay, one hour 23, 6% when I get there. Should we call it quits? Because it's estimated I get there at 8.30. I need to be there by 8.35 for the record. So 6% spare. That day we're not. Okay, stop the clock. So, one hour 23.46 is my charging time, but will I make it there? That's the final question, isn't it? You've got to finish it to win it. It's 18.54 now, and I leave here with 29%. 
Let's hit the road for the final leg. Let's push on. This is it, everybody. What a beautiful evening. <laughs> Quite a contrast to John O'Groats this morning. We've gone so far south that it actually gets dark nearly an hour. I think it's 50 minutes earlier here, 45 minutes earlier here than it does in John O'Groats because we've come that far south. Oh, it doesn't sound that much, but yeah. It's kind of weird. Less than one mile to go. I don't think I've ever been here before, maybe as a baby, but I don't really know where I'm going. I'm just following it to the end, until the road runs out. What bit do we call the end? Do I have to touch a post? <laughs> and the grid set of charge is probably the best bet. Here we are, look, right near the end. What's the final time going to be? Looks like we're running out of road. I can see a lot of sea. This is it. We are running out of road. This is Land's End. Right here. Welcome to Land's End. Does this count then? Is this the line? 23 minutes past eight. I don't know if that counts or not. I'll keep going, I'll keep going. There's more road yet. <laughs> Go as far as they let me go. I hope the charger's working. I've only got four percent. Your destination will be on the left. I can see it, so I'll cancel that. There we go. I think this counts, isn't it? Pay for parking. No one's there, I think. Car park. So I can only go this way. Twenty twenty four now. I don't know what it was 2023 when I crossed the boundary line. There's a charger down there, so let's park near that. It's probably wise. So I guess we should give a shout out to GridServe as well. Well done, GridServe, for providing chargers at opposite ends of the country. Legends. This is it. We've run out of road. There's 2024. That's it, 24 minutes past eight. We have run out of road. We are next to a charger, in fact. There's a grid serve charger. Let's have a look at the numbers then, quickly. So, uh, actually arrived at 4%, because I did some pretty heavy overtakes right in there. <laughs> uh, 258 watt hours a mile, pretty consistent today there. So nearly four miles per kilowatt hour, 848 miles covered. And we've used 219.7 kilowatt hours of energy. So let me put that in the uh, uh, metric for you. Uh, so that would be, 1,365 kilometers, 161 watt hours per kilometer. Verification, there you go, 25 minutes past eight. I'm thinking it's a record, and yet somebody's bound to come on and say, Oh no, somebody else did that in under 15 hours. Under 15 hours is possible if you don't have any delays or issues, I guess. So, um, yeah, I mean, if you get no traffic, but when does that ever happen on the M6? So, uh, well, here we are. Let's go, I'm at Land's End. I should find a sign or something, shouldn't I? We fell on the steps then, fall off the cliff. Okay, well, I guess that's it. I think we've got everything there, haven't we? So, if you don't think you can do long distances in an electric car, hopefully that proves the point. It's been a really hard day, such short stops, but um, that's a good challenge as well. I'm not saying I want to do it again in a hurry, but uh, yeah, I think we'll call it a wrap to our video. So, I'll thank you all again for watching. I hope it's been interesting watching me suffer. All I've got to do now is drive home. So, if you appreciate all that, even if you just skip to the end bit, so you've missed all the middle bit, give us a thumbs up and leave a comment below. If you've done the Jolly Groats Land's End, especially in an electric car, let me know. If you've done the petrol car, it's the quickest you've done it. And if you've ever done it on something else, let me know that as well. If you've ever been 15 hours, let me know that. <laughs> okay, thank you for watching. See you later. Yeah, epic, isn't it, really? Oh, great car.
A fantastic thing. Hey everyone, thanks for watching our videos. If you like our content and want to see more, don't forget to not only subscribe, but also hit the bell icon for notifications so you don't miss any new videos as they're uploaded. Plus, we're also on Instagram. Just look up R. Simons or RSEV. Us, we're on Facebook and Twitter. So lots of news, stories, and things as we go on each one of those channels.